Welcome to the Date Forever podcast. Keep your relationship fueled up with strategies discovered by couples and experts. Because at Fuel Collective, we believe better relationships will equal a better world. You are about to discover specific insights and tools that cost little or nothing to implement to help you date forever. And now, here are your hosts, a couple who always have a half-packed suitcase and a date night in the calendar, Sammy and Nathan Yeager. Welcome to the Date Forever podcast. Today, we're talking all about managing your relationships while remote working. Things we're going to touch on is how to stay connected while remote working, how to show up as your whole self, and how to manage your relationship while you're together with your partner all the time. Now, let's get into it. Welcome to the Date Forever podcast, everyone. Today, our guest is Sarah Regalherth. She is a serial entrepreneur and investor in startups, having founded eight since 2009. After several successful exits, she is now CEO of Grow My Team, a global recruitment and talent agency. She's also co-founder of League of Extraordinary Women. Welcome to the podcast, Sarah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So to start off, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, you gave me a little bit of an intro, but yeah, essentially I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I've been working remotely, turned all my companies remote back in 2014, 15, and I moved to the US in 2016. My companies are still Australian companies, but I live over here, which is awesome. Probably travel usually about eight months a year. I'm not traveling anywhere right now. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I guess that's a, a good starting point. We can get into it. <laughs> so Sarah, being that you switched fully remote in 2014, you're kind of like an expert now and you've got it all figured out. Obviously, that was a decision you had to make at some point. What prompted you to go, all right, it's time to be fully remote? Yeah, I made the decision because I wanted to be have the freedom myself. Like I, I didn't want to go to an office every day anymore. I wanted to travel. I wanted to live in the US. I loved my company. I loved my team, but I just didn't like the idea of having to turn up somewhere, you know, at the same time every day and um, be constrained and kind of wanted to just be able to work wherever I was. Like I do really love to travel, but and it wasn't that I wanted to take vacation all the time. It was that I wanted to just be in new and interesting places and be able to do my work. And then I realized that my team would enjoy and value that freedom as well. So gave it to everybody and it's been amazing. And then you birthed a whole new company out of it. Well, yeah, I mean, it was kind of interesting because Wealth Enhancers was the financial planning company that I was running at the time that I decided to start turning remote. And then very soon after, because it was 2014 that we actually launched Grow My Team um, as a little side project with a couple of other entrepreneurs, basically to be our own recruitment arm for remote talent. And then um, uh, over the years, I bought my other, I had three other um, co-founders I bought them all out over the years and when I sold Wealth Enhancers last year I came oh well, sorry it was the year before now 2018 yeah when I sold Wealth Enhancers in 2018 I went full-time into Grow My Team from January in 2019. Amazing so what would you say was the most challenging part about flicking the switch at that point? Um, we did it gradually so honestly it wasn't really challenging it was it surprised me how good it was so that's why I ended up turning the whole company remote. So I started with, I hired a financial controller, um, Michelle out of the Philippines, who still works for me. She works for one of my other companies. Um, And so that's, yeah, she's been with us for six years. And I was just like blown away by one, how well we got on. We became friends almost immediately. I traveled to the Philippines a lot because my uncle lives there. So I caught up with her on my next trip. Um, and she was really talented. She was doing a great job. She fit in really well with the team. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So then I just started hiring people all over the place. I guess there was still that transition period for me where I just had my own like guilt or like, can life really be this good? Like, is it really okay for me to like go and work by the beach or in a cafe or in some other country? And, you know, that was just like something I had to work through for myself. So we moved very quickly from offices into co-working spaces and started to grow our team remotely internationally and then over time got rid of the co-working spaces as well but I moved to Sydney for about so I moved to the US in 2016 I think I was in Sydney 2014 and 15 so I kind of tested the remote work thing 
while because I was from Melbourne originally, like just in another state. Um, but I worked from home the whole time, and we did have an office in Sydney, like a co-working space with a couple of team members in there. But I never, I never really went into that office because I was like, well, this is the time to kind of softly try it. And then eventually, I just did my move to America that I wanted to do, and ultimately we got rid of the co-working spaces and everybody went fully remote so it was a little bit of a transition um and and we went from kind of a 15 or 16 person team in Melbourne in an office and I think we had three in Sydney in an office so it was a little bit of a transition time but you know once we did it like everybody loved it and we just yeah made that decision and never really looked back. So there's obviously a whole heap of companies here in Australia at the moment who have basically made the transition somewhat overnight from you know primarily office space environment everybody's shipping in and shipping out every day to to now totally remote you know or at least 80 90 percent remote and they necessarily haven't had a plan to do that it's kind of just had to happen had to figure it out. What would you say is the number one tip for people who are in that transition working for a company that wasn't prepared? Mm. I mean, it's it's hard to say the number one tip because every company size is different and like what that technology and structures all look like is different. But for you as an individual, I suppose, um, my tip would be just to figure out and hopefully you have a little bit of freedom and flexibility within your organization, but figure out how you work best. And I think that's the coolest thing about working flexibly and remotely is like not necessarily having to conform to these structures of like I have to be in at this time I have my lunch break at this time and I leave at that time you can sort of start to tap into your own energetic rhythms and I know myself I'm quite an early person early morning person so sometimes I kind of have a rule like if I wake up after 4 a.m rather than just lie around, I usually have a lot of creative energy at that time. So I will just get up and start working. It doesn't happen that often. I'm probably usually get up around six or seven, but if it does happen, it's like very cool that I can just go downstairs and get some work done or even just bring my laptop into bed and just do some writing or whatever it might be. Um, so I think it's, it's really cool to like start to tap into your own energetic rhythms. And that goes also beyond that into just like where you like to work and how you like to work like what kind of light do you like what kind of room do you like and you have the choice within your house which is probably somewhere that you like because you live there versus your office which may not be your preference of environment it might just happen to be where the company you work for is located um so finding that place within your home where you like to work at this point like i do have a little office set up in my home but i mean I honestly, like I'm actually recording in my bedroom right now because I have people downstairs. Um, I often work on the couch if I just feel like doing some emails, like my end of day work where I'm just like, okay, I've done all the creative stuff. I've done all the like important stuff. And now I'm just doing a bit of like admin. Like it's kind of nice to light a candle and sit on the couch and do it. And I mean, obviously somebody else could probably come on here and argue about ergonomics and posture and all of those kinds of things. But the other cool thing about working remotely is you can get up and go for a walk or do some yoga in the middle of the day or all sorts of things. I do think it's important for everyone to consider and remember that right now is is like a very unique, like we've, as you guys mentioned, we've been thrown into remote. We're probably in our house with other people like partners or kids, sometimes parents, roommates, flatmates, animals. And you know, that's not how my life has been for the last five years. Like it's kind of, I was very a deliberate and structured chosen way of doing things. So it, it, there's definitely some added complications, but the other cool thing is there's a lot more tolerance right now for, um, if, if your dog does pop its head up on your zoom call, nobody really minds because their dog's doing the same thing. (laughs) So there's definitely some couples out there who are navigating like being around their partner for this volume of time, trying to like cohesively work play and live all in the same space. Do you have any advice around that? I think it's about finding your rhythms as a couple as well and making sure you're still creating ways to have separation. So going to different parts of the house and diving into your work, like that is a real disconnect from each other because I know when I'm working, it's like I'm I'm head into it, I'm thinking about work, I'm talking with my team, like I'm really there in that kind of space and environment. And then it's like, nice when I go and see my partner later in the day or whatever I'm actually with a new partner so we 
met a week before quarantine and decided to quarantine together. So we're like two months in and doing the whole thing. And it's really amazing, actually. I guess we got lucky and that's why we decided to quarantine together. But but like we even we've got a good rhythm going where you know, he's writing his book right now. I'm working on growing the company. We just closed a capital raise. We're starting tech development. So we're both like he's launching the company as well. We're both pretty like in it right now and doing a lot. So we just have our rhythm where um, we do our thing and then we come together later in the day. But I think you can also still make it fun. You can still cook dinner, a special dinner and have like sit down with a candle and have like a little date night or I don't know, send each other like a sexy text from downstairs or whatever. Like there's fun things you can still do. And I think it's just about trying to create that separation within. And then maybe you used to go running together or something like that. Maybe don't right now. Like maybe go do your own workouts because that might have been your one time during the day. You know, I, I don't know, like you might get up and go to the gym together or go to yoga or go for a run and then you go off and do your to your respective offices. But that's not the thing anymore. So maybe looking at like where can we break up what we're doing? So maybe doing the workouts separately or one of you cooking dinner while the other one rests and then bringing the dinner and it's like, you know, looking for things that you can separate. So you touched on a little bit earlier about, I guess, trying to find your energetic rhythms. So one of the real challenges of remote working is that there's no real set beginning and end to your work days. So how do you avoid the creep of starting earlier and finishing later and then your work ends up taking over your life? I mean, the thing I'd throw back at you is, are people really going to the office at nine o'clock and leaving at five? Or are they getting in at 7.30 and leaving at 7 p.m.? Because <laughs> I think the creep happens and we've got smartphones and then people are still working on their way home. So I think that kind of happens anyway. Um, not to like, I'm not unvalid. What's the word? I'm not like taking away from what you're saying. But I think that that creep actually came with the advent of all of the technology that we have and the fact that we all have laptops, we all have smartphones and we all have it all. Um, but it is a valid point. And I think what the advantage of working from home can be is rather than going to the office all day and then still carrying on work when you're at home, when you should be connecting with your partner or hanging out with your friends or whatever, um, we can actually split up the day a bit and have time where we're not working and we're doing what we want to do. So have a longer lunch break, take two, three hours in the middle of the day do some yoga, have lunch, read a book, and then come back to it. So I think it does require a little bit of discipline. It also requires a little bit of letting go of the guilt of like exactly how you should be working in these structures that we've been bound to for so long Um, and leaning into trusting yourself to get your job done and to do your work. I also think one of the benefits, um, oh, sorry, one of the, well, there's a lot of benefits of flexibility. And yeah, maybe one of the downsides is that you might work different odd hours, but as I said, the benefit could be that you took a three hour lunch break or that you went to the hairdresser. Well, we don't get to go to the hairdresser right now, but you know what I mean? You kind of, you're doing something that you would normally not, but you you could sit there and do your work and maybe dial into a meeting or something. Um, So you kind of like this flexibility, there's pros and cons. And I think becoming good at switching off is really important. But I mean, I think for many people that exists in or out of the office. Yeah. So I know that one of the things that works really well for us is actually having a dedicated office space in our house because um, initially when Sammy first started being remote, we felt like the work was encroaching on the rest of our life. And so one of the things that worked really well for us was having a door between between the office and between our, I guess, our leisure time. So it was really great to be able to shut the door on work and then and then be able to move into our leisure time and and put a bit of a barrier between work and leisure. Especially right now when we can't go and work in the cafe or somewhere else. I think it's like I definitely use my desk and my office space that I have at home a lot now. I'm probably using it 80% of the time, whereas I didn't actually used to use it that often because some days I'd be like, oh, I feel like um, going working in the cafe, just having people around me or I'd be traveling or I'd be at a friend's place and I'd take my laptop and just hang out there and work. So it was like not as often that I used to use it when I was just living my normal life. But now that we're all kind of a little bit more quarantined in our homes, like I definitely think having your own space and I'm making a lot more use of my own space right now for sure. I know that a lot of people have quite strong social ties with their workmates. And if they're kind of used to being able to pop over to their desk and say, let's go grab a coffee, 
How do those sort of social interactions translate to a remote culture, especially if someone's not done it before? Yeah, it's an interesting one because once again, like I've been doing it for so long, it's so normal for me, but I think we don't give ourselves enough credit for how many relationships we maintain on a daily basis online. Like how many friends do you have on Instagram? Sammy, we know each other from Instagram. Like, you know, like how many people are we actually friends with on Facebook and Instagram and text message and WhatsApp anyway? It's just now translating into the professionals. So yeah, it sucks. You can't walk and get a coffee together, but like you can still have a chat on the phone, on FaceTime. You can send each other funny memes. You can, you know, do all of the things. Hopefully the company you're working with or if it's your own company is using some form of messaging like Slack or Basecamp or even WhatsApp or whatever it might be. But those little chat tools, I think, are great ways to just say hi. And so, You know what I do a lot of? Actually, this is probably an interesting and useful tip for people. What I do a lot of, and I've been doing this for years, is like calling a friend on FaceTime and putting them there and we work together for hours and we just like do our work and someone will be like oh hey like what about this thing and oh yeah and then we have a joke and then one of us goes and gets a drink of water or coffee and we chat for a bit and like it's not this like three hour long conversation but we're kind of like hanging out for a few hours the way that you would and I've got a bunch of friends that we do that regularly with and it's really nice so I mean technology is pretty amazing like we can teleport right now I'm in Colorado you guys are in Sydney and we're you're sitting in my bedroom of my house actually (laughs) so really just using that technology that we we actually have been using a lot more of than we really give ourselves credit for to to manage and maintain our relationships well I think that's definitely one of the things that I've noticed about um, moving remote was that everybody is kind of embracing a lot of that technology to stay connected and I feel like actually talking to more people than I, I was while I was in the office. Yeah. So that's definitely been a bit of a shift, but a, actually kind of a nice shift. The other thing that I think is kind of cool is you don't have to deal with people's annoying quirks. You only really have to deal with the good stuff. Like you get to say hi and stuff and not get annoyed that they left their coffee cup in the dishwasher every day, in the sink every day or something. Yeah, like, you just got to deal with each other's. Yeah, you, you might have to deal with somebody else's, but not your co-workers. <laughs> So something that has come up with my group of girlfriends is that they're getting to know their colleagues in a totally different way. For example, the other day, one of my girlfriends had someone in her team turn up to a Zoom meeting with a pet snake and no one in their team knew she had a pet snake. So there's this whole space where we're starting to show up as one person rather than this work person and this home person. Can you talk to us a little bit about how we do that positively? Oh, that is my favorite thing about it because the truth is we are all whole people and when we're bringing only part of ourselves to work, then we're holding back all of this goodness that could be contributed. The other thing is if someone's going through a rough time, that energy is felt even if it's not said. Um, And what I've found in our company is we definitely, you know, very bring our whole selves to work. Like I was literally on the phone with one one of my girlfriends the other day. We started talking about work got on to the dieta she's doing with a shaman and then I started talking about how I'm manifesting through tantric sex and this was all in one like 30 minute phone call and I'm like but I love it like it's so amazing and then we got a new client the next day and I like message her I'm like I I manifested that last night (laughs) but it's a lot of fun (laughs) it's a lot of fun but it's like I love knowing all of my teammates at that level and it's who they are. And we have, we've got one girl right now whose dad's really sick in hospital. We've been through a lot. I've been through a breakdown and everybody knows and everybody can get around and support you rather than you kind of like showing up half assed, which is very reasonable if you're going through something traumatic in your personal life. But if nobody knows, people just start thinking, you're you're disengaged you've lost interest like something's going on but they don't know what it is and so bringing your whole self is bringing all that goodness as well as you know some of the tough stuff and I think it what we've found is it really bonds our team so my team is completely remote we've never had an office in grow my team we're all over the world um Theodora as an example is one of my best girlfriends I've only met her once in Israel last year in September we've been working together for a couple of years um, you know, we, we're very, very close team, like very good friendships. We know a lot about each other and it's such a beautiful thing. And I'm super excited that the rest of the world is starting to catch up and join this way of working because it's nice to learn these other things about your coworkers and 
you know, we all have different sides to ourselves and it's so fun to get to know all of those different parts and pieces of each of us. Yeah, that's so true. And I think we're actually learning a lot about our own partners as well because I guess Sammy hasn't really mm-hmm. seen me as my work self all that much and that might differ from normal life as well. So I think we're actually learning a lot about our partners as well as as and how we might communicate differently in the workplace and stuff like that too. It's cool. Could be a bit of a turn on sometimes as well, you never know. <laughs> like damn I love it how you threw down so well I guess that kind of leads into like how do you keep the romance alive with your partner when you're being exposed to their spreadsheets and their office voice oh man it's a big question isn't it I guess it depends on the partner it depends on the couple but like honestly I was I was sending nude photos of myself from the bathroom downstairs to my partner this morning when he was on a really important business call and I mean stuff like that is really fun right and I guess we can do that when we're not in this environment, but it's kind of a little bit, it's it's more fun. It's more interesting. Like I just went and did some yoga and then went up for a shower. Like he wasn't expecting that. It's like, oh, that's cool. Like it's a, it's a little bit spicy. And we we both really like listening to the other person, like have, running a meeting or doing their business, kind of like a bit of a turn on, you know, like, oh, love, you know, especially like if I hear him being interviewed or if he, he hears me like running my team meeting or something like that, like, um, that can be kind of attractive. So maybe find the things that you do each find attractive in each other in that professional sense and then like play with it a little, like, you know, purposely listen in on the things that do turn you on and maybe don't listen to the things that are not so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so to change directions a little bit, for individuals who have kind of had this taste of working remotely and maybe they're enjoying it um, and they want to, hold on to some of these things that we've experienced whenever we get to whatever the new normal is. How do you think employees can encourage their employers to hold on to some of the culture and flexibility that this remote opportunity has brought to us? I think communicating how happy you are, how, I mean, if you are, if that's, if that's what you're after, then I think communicating that as much as possible and obviously showing demonstrating through your work one of the things with being remote from like a leader's perspective or a company owner's perspective is it's very obvious who does their job and who doesn't when you're remote it's less obvious in an office because you look around and you see everyone sitting there and you're like well they're there I don't know they must be doing something whereas if they're remote it's like well I don't really know what they're doing and their work's not done so we, we've got to deal with this um so it happens it sort of sorts the, what's the saying, the wheat from the chaff or whatever. It sorts the wheat from the chaff pretty quick um, from a leadership perspective. And and so I would hope that the people that are listening are, are those who are performing, who love their job, who are engaged and who are delivering results. And so I think that gives you a position to say like, hey, I love it. I have been able to do more or be more productive. I have more time to do these other things, which is making me happier, healthier, fitter. I'm still getting all my work done. Maybe I'm even getting more done. Like, For some people, I think they're finding they can be more productive. Um, I I guess that's really all you can do, right, is just try to communicate as much as possible and show up and do a good job. Yeah, and for those people who are leading a remote team for the first time, what are a handful of things that would be beneficial to implement? I think a good piece of communicating communication technology like Slack or WhatsApp, I'm sure everybody's already done that, but that's just definitely having something where you can chit chat throughout the day, easy access to each other, um, a weekly meeting at the very least. If you're all in the same time zone, a very short daily huddle can work well, like 15 minutes, just jumping on, say hi in the morning with a coffee. Maybe what are the top three priorities you're working on today or something like that, some kind of little kind of accountability piece, conversation starter type thing. Um, and then I think checking in, like asking how they're doing, like remembering the whole person like we were talking about earlier and just dropping a line um, using these different types of technology to say hi like I leave voice notes to my team on WhatsApp quite often outside of our normal um, communication software we use Basecamp for all of our workflow and communications and everything that's where all like most of the stuff goes but every so often I'll just drop one of them a voice note like hey how you doing Um, just give them a little update on what I've been doing tell them they did a good job Things like that, I think, make a really big positive impact on your team and it reminds you to just see like how they're doing holistically, not just with their job, but 
they are right now, especially in very new circumstances, new situations. Ask them genuinely, like, what is hard right now? What is challenging you? Just letting your team vent some of that can just relieve it a little bit for a minute. They're heard, they're understood, they're seen. Thanks for sharing that, Sarah. I think some of those tips are great just as a leader generally, not even of a remote team, but just leading a team. Yeah. So before we say goodbye, I want to share a few of the values that we have at Fuel Collective. They're to love life, to date forever, and to be the change. And what be the change means for us is about being the change in our own lives and taking accountability for what you have the ability to influence, but also being the change that you want to see in the world. So to say thank you for joining us, we have given 10 days of education to some girls in Malawi so that they can continue to stay in school and progress to the next grade. So thank you so much for making that possible. Oh, that's amazing. What a beautiful gift. That's so beautiful. And so one of the things that's come to me in every meditation in the last two months since we've been in this situation to me, for me, is just be the light. Just be the light, be the light, be the light. I'm very loving this time. I'm very happy in quarantine. <laughs> and my life's not that different. I'm quite enjoying it. And I just, I have a lot of like space and um, light and love to give to the world right now. So that's beautiful. Thank you. So what's the best way for people to connect with you if they've loved what you've been talking about today? Um, hit me on Instagram is probably the easiest at Sarah Regalhuth or you can our company is at Grow My Team. So before you leave us, is there a final hot tip or parting words? The only thing I would say, and I feel like we circled back to it a number of times, is that it's not actually that different. Like operating remotely to operating office is really not that different the way that we've been communicating. And even think how many times you've texted someone who's sitting next to you in the office or sent them a funny thing on Instagram or tagged them in something like it's not as different as we as we thought it was or as scary as we thought it was. And like I'm super excited that everybody's getting to experience it because I think there's far more benefits than there are challenges. I totally agree. Thank you so much for joining us, Sarah. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, guys. Thanks heaps for joining us. If you love what we're doing here and want more, subscribe to the Date Forever podcast to make sure you never miss an ep. Come and hang out with us and other awesome couples who are fueling up their relationships in the Thriving Couples Collective Facebook group or check us out at fuelcollective.com.au. Until next time, keep on dating because better relationships equal a better world.